Throughout the Exiled Lands, there are a bunch of different armor and weapon recipes to be learnt, whether you're a completionist or just want to try out some new builds. They're pretty worthy to learn, and hopefully there's something in this guide that you'll find handy. A bunch of recipes are located within dungeons that I already have guides for, so I'll put a link to those guides, but I'll show you the whereabouts of the dungeon and all of that in this guide, but for time's sakes, we won't include a run. And I'll go through why you might want to learn some of those armors and weapons at the end. We're starting out with some of the more easy to acquire armors. This one is the Hyena armor over at Scoundrel's Gateway. Here's the Black Galleon. It's just a little head on a stick that you touch and you can acquire it. If you head over to Sepumeru, you'll find this little house here. If you've already gone to the Witch Queen Palace, that's a later feature in here, you can access this room and go in there and speak to Razma. But for the time being, climb up on the roof and you'll notice another little that you touch and learn Relic Armor. Heading over to the jungle now, we are at the Jungle Black Galleon area. And right here, you'll find apparently some treasure. Sometimes I'm not going to like pick this up and walk really slowly to my base, so that's not a thing. So you can if you like. It's not always going to be here, but click this book and you'll learn some fun things. Black Osa and Bacchania. All of those were just armors, but now we have something that's just a weapon. It's handy early game as there's no other way to make an axe without this recipe, without a blacksmith and iron. If you like an axe early game, it's fun. And it's also nice to skin your stuff with crazy trash so people don't know what you're coming at them with in PvP. I want to lock onto him. So you can touch this and acquire Tafari weapons and you craft them in your inventory. Don't cost that much. And just behind us at Skulker's End, you're going to find, I don't even think I mentioned, this is where you find the Tafari Bone weapons as well as the Dregs Dungeon. The Tafari Bone weapons were down there. And you go in there, kill a dude. I got a separate guide link somewhere. But you get reptilian armor, it's a glowy goop torch, abysmal dodgy weapons that aren't very great. Surely you can craft something better. Again, separate guide. Go check that out if you wish to go learn that and need a bit more extra guidance. Back over towards Sepimaria, there is the Silver Mine or Scorpion Queen Dungeon. Again, separate guide linked somewhere. You can get Scorpion Poison, some Scorpion Eggs. Scorpion Poison is excellent. You can apply it to your weapons. I don't have any extra on me currently. Don't know what I've done with it. And she also drops a shield 100% of the time called the Scorpion Ward, legendary shield if you like them. If you need more details, follow that link. Check out that video that Rock knows was of Alcasa what's happening. He was very excited for a second. While still in the vicinity of Sepimaru, if you come over to Waterside, right behind Conan's house, there's a little door here that you can click on. I've got a separate guide that I've uh, just finished filming, so editing. Hopefully it's out before this, but maybe not. We'll see. There'll be a link somewhere at some point. The recipes at the end boss are kind of random. You only get one. You have to eat it. It's not a tablet. A little bit different. You either get the armors or the weapons and it, the different armors as well because there's different tiers of armor. It's a little bit random and you might not even get them. So you can also get things like the Scythe of Thag, which is pretty cool. You can get a legendary truncheon in there. Bunch of relic fragments to be had in there if you like making oils of power because that's about all that uses them now. And it's where you farm Kari still. Over by the Mounds of the Dead, we'll find the Burrow King Cavern. It's one of the easiest dungeons. It's not really even a dungeon. You need to bring a demon blood here to be able to access the door. He's a great source of demon blood once killed. The boxes in Sepimaru sometimes randomly drop a demon blood too, so yay. If you require that, come here. He's pretty easy. They have buffed him slightly. He's still so easy. It shouldn't be a mid-world northern boss. Again, separate guide if you need more details on him. That's linked somewhere. It's not really a guide. It's a Let's Play episode. But it features this and what you need to do to beat him. Here you'll learn the polearm, which, when crafted with a bladesmith, is equivalent to the Black Spear of the Wall Circle, which you acquire with Obelisk from the... Um, Mechamosis dude, which we'll go see in a moment for another one of the recipes. It um, 
has a lot of reach. It's worthy for a skinning for your other things on a thermagogy bench. And you can also get some daggers and only craft it with hardened steel and other wood bits. That location again. Heading over to the Black Keep up north by the Frostbridge Obelisk. It's um, quite cold up here. You may need some spicy, but maybe not. If you have a named armorer, you can craft Redeemed Legion. If you kill the guy in here, the um, King Scourge himself, you can get the Heart of the King Scourge, which will allow you to craft his weapons. Pretty easy dungeon. I'll link a guide when I make one. Super easy to acquire the recipes themselves. Don't be scared. This next dungeon holds some of the most important recipes in the game. They vary from armor to armor and weapon attachments. The weapons themselves, they're good if you want to get instantly corrupt and you don't have a summoning circle or whatever to summon stuff to corrupt you. That's a thing with them. Uh, but apart from that, well, they're all right. We'll go through those stats later. But it has the ability to teach you master weapon fittings and master platings and stuff like that, which add extra, extra stuff onto your things. But to craft these armor pieces, especially the Godbreaker ones, you're going to have to run the dungeon once for each piece, essentially. And you acquire little keys in there and you kill the dudes. And anyway, look at my guide. It's not too hard it's a little tedious you can get some other fun legendary weapons while you're in there like this axe of the gate guardian to my opinion one of the best legendaries you can get because it does sunder as well and it does bleed and you can't put poison on it which is a little lame but sunder is super important in this age of heavy armor because it cuts through armor that location is here at Khalil stronghold right by the brimstone obelisk Really easy location to come find. You can get black eyes and a whole bunch of stuff in there. Like I said, view the guide if you want a little bit of extra detail. But on the note of weapons that sunder and very handy armor that you can acquire, we're at the sinkhole again, located right by an obelisk up there somewhere. If you're on an unfriendly server that doesn't have an elevator, I advise placing an elevator yourself. Much easier than wandering through the little passage back there and coming from... I think this is the entrance you're gonna wander through here there's a boss snake in there with a key that you can get for a legendary key though and lots of gray lotus so it's not not worthy but you do gain corruption the entire time you're in there and well here as well really if i wasn't in creative mode i'd be gaining corruption this guy's a bag of dicks his fire shot isn't great it'll probably one shot you he has a decent chunk of hp He'll go down pretty quick, but he will be messing you up at the same time. So try to avoid the fire attack of all things. Um, he possibly even kill you while you're riding the elevator if you've seen my let's plays. That was fun. But run over here and touch this. And learn all of the dragon bone things, which now do sunder upon thing, which is cool. And it's pretty easy to jump down or run around either one, really. You can jump down naked and like yourself if you really want to but these are one of the, all these ones in the dungeons and stuff you do have to be of a certain level to be able to learn them most are like 56 60 that's gonna allow you to learn some of them maybe pretty sure you have to be 60 for most of the weapons and stuff so you might as well wait until you succeed to touch most of these anyway back over in the jungle is another incredibly easy dungeon you can do it naked stone daggers it's she's a little bit annoying herself. View the separate guide if you want some in-depth detail on it. Again, don't be scared, but this is some of, in my opinion, the best early game armor that you can get if you are poor or even if you're not. It's got a light, which uh, I don't even care about, but the medium, particularly, it's so cheap to craft, which I'll show you at the end, but also the dudes over at the Pagoda of Boundless Lust to drop it as an epic armor, which is pretty cool. People over in, like, the mounds also drop epic armor, which is health-related, but they hurt more. So if you want to go up there to get some of that, come here, get their armor. You can repair it once you know the recipe for, like, a leather. It's so cheap, and it's very cheap to craft, like I said. So if you're struggling for lead things, so you go in here, fight her, be prepared that once you're in there and you start the thing, you can't come back out again, so that's fun. But at least we've got summon corpse and all that these days. 
Yeah, you can also learn some random Lemurian weapons in there too. They're not like the ancient Lemurian weapons, which are usually I'd um actually in fact go through this tunnel and jump down here and then do all that when that was journey steps. Slide through this tunnel and this butt right here. Location. Touch this butt and it's gonna take you to the Dagon dungeon. Again, I've got a separate guide all on this dungeon. There's some pretty useful recipes in there still, even though a bunch of the things got nerfed. Do bring some breathing potions and or a breathing mask. All of that good stuff so you don't die is doable just without it. But yeah, it's fun. Some of them are definitely worth touching still, so yeah, check it out. Last but not least in our recipes you acquire within dungeons is the Kurak dungeon, where you get the Kurak armor. Less meta now, but if you like a lot of stamina and agility stuff, it's still nice to have. It's a decent source of blood crystals in here still, but I find it easier to just go and farm golems and rock noses around and bring them here to trade in for your obelisks. Again, I got a separate guide on blood crystals and a separate guide on Kurak. This is almost just one big promo for my other videos. But hey, it does bring down time and at least you get to know where the locations are. And if you don't want spoilers, you don't get them. Almost like I planned this. At the location of Mechamosis' spire, which is also where you learn the set religion. His head is in a bowl over there somewhere. Okay, I should probably show you that quickly because it is trenched. Just here, learn set. Good stuff. You do need to be not encumbered and have 30 blood crystal with you to acquire this and not be in creative mode. It doesn't like that. But yeah, I won't let you do it if you're encumbered, so keep that in mind. And if you die in the dungeon, you don't lose your inventory or anything. You just fall on outside of the dungeon, in your bed or wherever, the desert, with your things on you. So that's fun for body vaulting. Um, cool, Conan, just give us the easiest way ever. To do that fun con. But yeah, if you want a more detailed guide, check out my other video. Now you got a few different armors and weapons to keep you alive in mounds. It's pretty worthy coming here and putting down a wheel of pain and knocking out tier two fighters or whatever fighters they tame so quick now and dismantling their weapons to get you star metal and who needs to even go farm star metal the regular way anymore because the fancy dismantling ventures give you so much back. Extra tip if you've made it this far. But we're getting the Pride of Asir armor, which you craft at the Frost Temple. Which you craft at the Frost Temple, which is a little bit later in the video. But you need to come to this specific location. I'm going to enter creative mode again because they're going to hurt me. You need specifically Thogger's journal note, whatever. There are three mounds you have to visit. This one, this one, and this one. If you've seen my easiest taskmaster to get named taskmaster guaranteed all of the time just in here, these guys are all usually aggressive. But if you don't want a taskmaster, you can kill him by Gothrid and you take his little seal. You go back out here, we, we head over the pond into the final mound. Now, I can't be in god mode for this because the guy won't aggression to me. So now he's aggressioned. I kill him. And get his tablet. Now we head over by the obelisk right here. Do the fourth mound. This one has lots of red lotus, which is good for leveling and making some potions, I guess. Mostly use it for leveling. Talk to this guy with your acquired bits and you'll learn the Pride of Asir. Well, you'll get the tablet which will learn you the Pride of Asir. From there, you need to head all the way north to the Frost Temple, which again is right by an obelisk. So you can almost do all this, touch your obelisk on your journeys, get a couple of things done at once. There's the obelisk just over there. Quite handy. Uh, these guys suck, but they're a decent form of thick hide and spicy things in their pockets. They also drop some other cool things, but they give you frostbite when they hit you, so you want to bring some spicy food with you also, probably. Uh, here's some encumbrance soup, some steel. I have a separate this guide as well, but just quickly zoom through here. If you head to your left, that is the forge itself. If you need the Black Eyes weapon recipe still or to achieve the game journey thing. Here's Hagar of the North. Ew, 
heal, I say. He'll drop whatever. Touch his tablet right here, learn black eyes things. The broadsword used to be really good, but they've nerfed it dramatically, which sucks. Black eyes everywhere. Head down here. There is a dragon down the bottom, which you can kill. I don't think he gives you anything, particularly apart from dragon bone and that. Volatile glands doesn't give you a key or anything particularly fancy. You want to take out these guys because they're aggressive. You're not in god mode. You can hack them up for their whatevers. Sometimes they'll drop things like the hardened steel pick, which you need when you want to make the actual recipes for the tools themselves or the weapons. For that, you're going to require the hardened steel variant. It doesn't matter if it's damaged or even completely broken, you can still turn them into their variant. And you need a fair bit of stuff for this, so that's a journey. And it takes a really, really long time to craft, and there's no thrall that you can put in it to make it better stats or anything like that. So, is it worth it anymore? Who knows? A little bit further north into the volcano, you can find a little pathway around here somewhere. There's pathways everywhere up into the volcano. Again, right by an obelisk. Obelisks everywhere, just down there. You're going to be wanting to go to this area near this guy. Now, you can also kill sorcerers themselves for this recipe. Sometimes they don't drop it. And it can be annoying trying to acquire it. There we go. Skeletal Cultist Master Armor. If you are having trouble acquiring it all day for some reason, remove it from sorcerers or sorcerers from the game. There is a book of it just here. Right here near the shrine of the oracle. My crazy dog in the background. But there's a couple of other recipes you can acquire in the volcano. And it's much less deadly here than it used to be, which is nice. Again, I have a more in-depth volcano guide if you wish to learn that. But journey down this pathway. All these guys are going to be aggressive. So do mind that. Head up here. Random crafting thralls. Immediately turn this way. Go up here. Then you climb up this one. Through up here. Woo! Don't do that. Head all the way around and learn Serpent Man. Which is pretty good because it's super cheap to craft. It doesn't have an added stat to it like um, Dragon Bone or the Obsidian ones that we're about to learn. It's still pretty handy because it's so cheap and it does an extra little damage. Again, we'll go through those stats in a moment. Right at the Well of Skellis at the tippity top. Not quite the tippity top, there's still more tippity top. But the quick way down is to jump into the well, like so. Now, whether you want to acquire the obsidian weapons or just leave again, that is by far the best way to get off the top of the tower. Now, usually... You'd run the dungeon. I have a separate, separate dungeon actual running guide because I usually just cheese this area a little bit. I'll exit creative mode so you can see whether I go splat or not. I probably will because I do like to go splat off things. But essentially right from here you will be going. We are heading for this little thing here. So what we are going to do is head down. Didn't go splat not once. A little bit of a splat. Because you'd be able to do that in real life. Hey, I'm just back. Drop that trash. Head straight ahead. Continue jumping down the many stuffs. If you have glutton for punishment, which you probably should, you shouldn't take too much damage with these things. You'll just heal up again anyway. Sometimes I head the wrong way, but this is, in fact, the correct way. Watch out, snake. And head up on into the temple. You don't actually have to fight this boss if you want to get his toad tracker tree drum for removing your bracelet. Good for you, but you don't have to. His tablet is located behind his throne. Pretty easy to find. Bar it, guys. Lots of treasures. Well, kind of average treasures in those one boxes. That was weird. I've never seen like 
that trash. Now these guys are really easy to kill. They take like one hit, two hit. But I can't be bothered killing them because we don't need to. So I'm going to just leave. To leave, to follow this path. Now you may never have been to this location. It's where you get the black blood tools usually. Well, it's a bit further up. There's a whole series of caves which have the Jill in them. Also where you get hollow bone arrows, and bows, acts of violence, and the acid arrow recipe specifically in this cave. Lockstone Cave. A bit further up you will find another cave which has a boss Skeksy in it which drops the black blood tools on random. He also drops a legendary key. So he's worth harvesting and this is how you get some black blood if you're not just dismantling sorcerer's spell pages if you actually need more. Hey, don't want in. It's quite dark. Bring a torch. These guys are all usually aggressive but god mode. Right in the middle here, you'll find this guy who also drops a key. But specifically, and sometimes he'll also drop the um, a bow and axe and a few other different things. But this is where you learn specialist ammunition, which is the acid arrows. You require black blood and volatile glands for that, so you'll need to be going and killing a whole bunch of dragons anyway. And usually a fragment of power. Pack him up, get whatever, black blood and... Sometimes there's arrows and stuff from him. And then right back here's his box. We got a back to Coben Agility Warhammer. And now that we've gone and touched all the tablets and explored all the things, I've probably forgotten something because likely. Let's go over some of their stats and what they're like when crafted with a shield right. We have the pirate stuff, those are their extra legs. The stats aren't even worth really going over because it's not great, but that's what it looks like if you want to thermagurgy it. I like the peg leg. Peg legs are vital in my life um, for dancers, for myself, for dressing up the tribe mates. list goes on. We have the black corsair. This is, again, crafted with all a shield, right? And it's all agility. Which that wasn't a thing. Looks pretty cool. Again, fancy eye patch. The Relic Hunter armor, which you get from the Shemites. This is epic. You can make unepic variants as well as some of this armor. We've got some things doing carry capacity, some things doing agility. We have the Kingslayer pole arm and the daggers made with a bladesmith. Hyena armor, health, follower damage, concussive, health, follower damage, concussive, follower damage, concussive. That's nice when they have armors that have a little too far. You definitely go into some nice farming builds. Definitely not a PvP build, but maybe medium armors and this stuff. That looks cool for a uh, Thermagogi. So. Then we have the Light Dragon Bone. Strength, stamina, health, health lots of health. This is the same throughout all dragon bone. It's not mixed up like legion is. But now they have similar durabilities and weights and all that to legion anyway. But if you want to make like, yeah, you'll figure it out. Here's the medium. We have some strength, some stamina, some health, health, health. That's what that looks like. Then we have heavy and strength, stamina, health health. Not the biggest fan of a lot of these. Then we got the dragon bone weapons all crafted with a bladesmith without a kit on them. Obviously. But uh, we got some pretty decent stuff. The shield is not crafted with an armor that I just spawned in. Uh, same with the javelin because I couldn't be bothered. And the arrows. I don't think it throw changes them. Then we have the Goldtest Armor. This is quite good because it's a 3 far, so you get a lot for your money and it's quite cheap to craft and it will keep you spicy. Obsidian stuff, like I said, does bleed now. Um, they're pretty cool. The weapons are as good pretty much as Black Blood, a little less durability and all that compared to... Well, I've been using that a lot. <laughs> Ironic number to land on.
very meme number. Serpent Man stuff, as you can see, isn't a huge deal greater, but is a huge deal cheaper. So we love that. And it's a little bit lighter. So the throwing axe is specifically very cheap to make. The arrows, some of the best arrows that you can craft. Again, these shields were just spawned in. Then we have the Pride of Asia stuff, which is cool because it's um, got a couple of twofers in it as well. Well, one. For a medium armor, it's got some... It looks cool, I guess. You can look like a giant. Here's the Black Ice stuff. Pretty meh now. A reptile... Tre reptilian chest pieces. Stamina, pants, health. Stamina of the top, uh, head, stamina, health, love. This was just spawned in because I've never once made these. And then we have the glow stick, which is a very good source of glowage. It's super cheap. It's like glowing goop and bone to craft. It's quite long compared to an impoverished torch, for instance. I think a regular torch is a bit longer. You can no longer add a kit to it, which sucks. You used to be able to add a durability kit and make it last longer. But then we have the Lemurian. This is the stuff that the guys at the Pagoda drop. This is crafted stuff though. I'll show you the stuff that, with the stats that they drop. Because obviously it's going to be less good, but it's free to begin with to get you better armor. So that's fun. All strength, which is nice if you like strength weapon. And then this stuff has some troopers, but it is very light and doesn't give you much armor. So let's take this stuff out quickly. I'll show you that in a second. This is the Lemarian, ancient Lemarian pike. Lemarian pike. Like, what the hell? <laughs> That's so much easier to learn now. Uh, the axe is still pretty decent for what it is, for sure. With a kid on it. We're still doing things. It's all right. Ancient Lemarian sword. Lemarian sword again they haven't changed things enough the daggers kind of suck now they're no longer 70 and the shield was just a spawned in shield you can compare the Lemarian chest piece to the Lemarian chest piece like that. Oops. So it's still a pretty nice acquisition considering it's free armor and you can uh, dismantle it for some stuff. Then on to Godbreak Godbreaker which apparently clips through and looks terrifying on the <laughs> display stand. We love that. So these are a little bit different to other armors because they have hidden perks to them which don't initially tell you but you go into the info and like this chest piece gives you extra healing. The pants give you extra stamina region, the hats of gas mask, the boots used to heal stuff, I'm not sure if they still do, like weapons and things when you took damage, and the gloves add additional strength, but they already said that, so I don't know if they add strength again upon that, I don't think so. But you have to literally do a run of the dungeon just to make one piece, so I used to only really ever fuck with the pants, uh, the shoes, but now it's basically the pants. And a hat if I'm feeling bougie. There are two different types to make. You have the regular Godbreaker and then you have the Chilled Godbreaker, which is not legendary and you can actually repair it, I think. Whereas the other Godbreaker, once you make it, you can't repair it. It does have more stamina because of it. Then these are the weapons you can craft. You will get instantly half corrupted when equipping them, but they're pretty decent. Like, not gonna lie. That is akin to like a Hanuman's gutter almost, and it's a lot lighter. So if you're going with like a corrupted strength build, kind of handy. But yeah, if you just want to get really corrupt really quickly, equip one of those. They're kind of expensive to make as well. Then we have champion stuff, which again has some hidden perks. The chest does poison damage, I think. Yeah, poison and bonus strength. The pants remove corruption. The head is bleed. The shoes are cripple, and I'm pretty sure the gloves again do nothing because sometimes they forget things. And also, you cannot dye any part of the champion armor except for randomly the boots. 
the boots, you can die. Nothing else. Okay, fun come. But if you want to be shiny legion lady or man, then um, yeah. Also, you only get to see what these look like on a lady character because let's face it, most people have lady characters and I can be bothered spawning in a man and then making doubles of all of the armor. So you'll get the point enough. Sorry if you play a dude though. <laughs> then on to Silent Legion. The light is some of my favorite looking vanilla armor without thermagurgying. I quite like the look of it. I may even make it in real life sometime and do a cosplay because it's cool. But this used to be some parts of the meta. It's all mixed up, unlike the dragon bone. These are going to have different stats throughout. Like the medium is going to be different. And this is going to be. So we have two different types of le um, heavy legion. We have the redeemed and then the regular. If you need a named armor up, maybe a two three. I'm pretty sure a named one in your bench to be able to craft it. Otherwise, you can just make the regular Legion, which doesn't have the double perks. That is the exact same armor and stuff now, I'm pretty sure. That's 509. Seven, yeah. Okay. And then these guys, which they need to buff to make it worth even killing that guy, because it's what you use the heart for. Then we have the Kari sets, which look pretty cool as well. Some of them are nice because they have double perks to them. But there is no heavy armor. We get two light armors and a medium. So also keep that in mind. But some of this medium is pretty decent anyway. And then we have these pristine weapons which can drop off the one skull bosses in there randomly as well as some other dudes off the actual boss like the cypher stag and things. So I thought I'd put them in there. You can't craft them. But... This is the Kari stuff when crafted with a bladesmith. The bow is by far the best bow. Highly recommend just trying to get the bow anyway and going to do the dungeon so you can get enough stuff to craft the bow. I think the pristine daggers look much cooler than the regular daggers. They also do a lot more stuff. They're almost like those little epics that they were talking about. And then we have the Kurak armor. Which gives you a lot of different cool perks, which could be built into your build if you like light armor. I used to wear the pants a lot because 32 stamina is a bunch. And if you have some type of archery build and light armor is still pretty handy in this day and age, like you can wear other forms of armor. Heavy is just handy because it's 0 0.25 less amount of roll than if you're naked or wearing light armor, but you get a thousand percent more armor so the ways of the pros and cons are i'm just gonna wear heavy armor and uh, negate slightly having stamina because i'll just wear the gut breaker pants and regen it really quickly so quick in fact that i'll look like i'm teleporting to other people but uh, there is a bunch of different builds that you can do with all these different armors and i hope you guys explore let me know what your favorite type of armor to wear is in the comments i'll be doing a bunch of different builds that I like to wear. They're um, not particularly meta. I'll go over some of the meta stuff, but I don't care for a lot of that stuff anyway. But at some point I'll do a video going over all my opinions on what type of armors I like to mix up and wear. Currently I'm wearing something of a meta adjacent, but it's practical for me in this because it's single player on PvP. It'd be slightly tweaked. I hope you found this information informative. Smash that like button if you did and subscribe if you're not already. It means a bunch to me. Add a comment of what you'd like to see next. Oh, just quickly. This is how cheap the Serpentman stuff is to make in the garrison bench. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, you get added. Extra. I forgot to add it before. Lemurian light's still pretty cheap considering it's an epic and you don't need layered stuff. Look at this. That's crazy. It is medium, but it's not bad still. Definitely will get you places to be able to acquire better armor. And if you like a medium, it's fucking perfect. It doesn't give the best stats, but it does give you armor and again to get places. Until next time.